Hi, I'm Amelia and welcome to today's video in which I'm going to share my plans for sewing in February and March. Hi, welcome to my channel Sew Amelia. I'm Amelia and this is where I talk all about sewing and crafting a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. I'm so glad you've decided to join me today and I'm really excited to share some of the plans I have for my sewing in February and March this year. Now, as you'll know, if you've watched my previous couple of videos, we are getting some building works done in our house at the moment. So please do forgive any extraneous noises that you might hear going on in the background. I do my best to film during quiet moments, but as you'll know, if you've had building works done, those are few and far between. So yes, do forgive any background noise and I'm just going to get started with today's video. So I thought I would begin with what I am wearing in today's video. This was one of my plans for February actually, and I've already got it made up. So I thought I would wear it in today's video as a little bit of a sneak peek. And I'll share more details about how I put this together in my February makes video. So what I'm wearing today is the Closet Core Mile End Sweatshirt, and I have been wanting to make this for a very long time, so I'm really glad that I got it made up. And I chose to make just the simple cropped sweatshirt view A, and I made it in some remnants that I had left over from some Mind the Maker jersey that I bought previously, and I also had some of the ribbing left over. I'll pop up a little picture of it as a bit of a sneak peek, but do come back at the end of the month for my February Makes video in which I'll share more details about the sizing and how I put this one together. But one lovely thing about this make was that actually I had remnants left over from the remnants and I just can't bear throwing things away. So what I decided to do in the end was put together another mini sweater and here it is. I'll pop in a picture so you can see it properly. But I made the Ikati Patterns Jasmine sweatshirt for my little girl and I did the same sort of thing. I colour blocked that. I even cut the front in two pieces and I cut the back in two pieces just because I really only had scraps left and that was the best way of getting out these pieces. I had enough of the ribbing left over as well to put ribbing at the cuffs and across as the hemband. Now my daughter has loved wearing that. It's been quite cold in our house this week with builders coming in and out and we've both loved being all snuggled up in our new sweatshirts. So that was a happy accident that I had enough remnants left over to make a colour block sweater for her too. I have now exhausted that fabric so there won't be any more of these sweaters but I'm so glad I was able to use up the remnants and make a couple of jumpers that we are both loving wearing. So on with my other plans for February. Now one thing that I've wanted to make for a long time, so this is Nomi Patterns ME2003 by Alyssa Threads and when I saw this pattern come out I knew that it was one I really really wanted to make. I love this ruffle around the sweater and I love the cropped length. So many things about this jumper I really, really like. And so I had to wait very patiently for it to come out in the UK and it has now come out in the UK so I did jump and buy it. Now I'm a little bit nervous about these patterns now. If you watched my recent video you'll know that I made a Berta skirt and I do find the sizing on these patterns pretty tricky to kind of work out. But there are lots of finished garment measurements on the pattern pieces for this one, so I'm really hopeful that I've chosen the right size. I have cut it out now, and I'm very excited to get sewing this one. So in this envelope, there are patterns both for a cropped sweater, there's a longer length sweater, and then there are these two skirts as well, a shorter skirt and a longer skirt. Now they're all made from jersey fabric. I'm not so keen on the skirt, personally I don't think it would fit my particular shape but I do love the sweater and I'm very excited to make that. Now there are two different sleeves as well. There is a sleeve which is just fitted in here at the shoulder and then it's gathered at the cuff and there is another sleeve with a puff sleeve at the top and then gathered into a cuff. Now I've actually decided, which you might think is unusual for me, to make the plain sleeve at the top. I just think that looks better, especially with the ruffle around the neck. I just thought there might be too much going on if I do the ruffle around the neck and the puffed sleeve at the top. So in terms of sizing, this one goes from a small to an XXL and that is roughly a size 8 to a size 26 and it goes from a bust of 31 and a half inches up to a bust of about 48 inches. I think the crop length will be fine on me. I have quite a short torso, but there are lengthened and shortened lines on the pattern, and like I said, there is a longer line cardigan as well. Now, I plan to make this from some beautiful merino jersey that I picked up when I was in New Zealand from We Are The Fabric Store. It is quite light for this pattern, but what I've found with my jumpers is I just love to layer them 
over my dresses and over my skirts in the spring and the autumn, even in the winter, a light wool layer never goes amiss. And I actually think because it's a lighter wool, that ruffle should sit really nicely around the neck in this slightly lighter wool fabric. So I'm very much looking forward to making that. Now, the next thing I would like to make is in this beautiful seersucker fabric. Now, this was a Pigeon Wishes fabric, and I don't know that it's available anymore. If, it, if I can find it anywhere, I will put it in the description box below. It's one that is in my Make 9 for this year. It's a fabric I've had for a long time and I've just looked and looked and looked at it and I love it so much, but I haven't worked out a pattern to make with it yet. What I think I will do is I want to try and get this one sewn up for Valentine's Day because my husband and I are hopefully going to be able to go out for dinner perhaps in the weekend following Valentine's Day and I'd love to be able to wear this. So I think I will cut it out into the new craft house everyday top. Now I've made the dress a couple of times and I absolutely love it. And I think the top would look so lovely over jeans. And with those sleeves, I'm gonna make the short sleeves. I think you'd be able to dress it up, but I also think you'd be able to wear it casually with a jumper over the top in cooler weather. So I'm very excited about this one. I think the cotton seersucker is just going to hold the puff of those sleeves beautifully. And I do like making things that are going to be trans seasonal. So this one will be fine in winter, lay it up under a jumper. I think it will also go beautifully into the spring and hopefully even into the summer, perhaps over a pair of shorts or perhaps even over one of my skirts, not sure, but absolutely love it. Love the new Craft House Everyday dress. Very excited about making the top. So for any of these patterns, if you are interested in them or finding out more about the sizing and the details of the pattern, please do go to the description box below this video and I will have links to all of the patterns and if I can find them, I'll have links to the fabrics as well. So you can go and find those and have a good look through the pattern details for yourself. Now the next fabric that I've got was very kindly gifted to me by Backstitch Shop and the pattern as well was gifted by them actually. I am an ambassador for Backstitch Shop, they're a beautiful fabric shop and I'm very excited to be working with them this year as one of their ambassadors. So they do send me the fabric and the pattern and in return I write a blog for them. So I won't share this make obviously until I have had the blog published and that will be at some point in March. So I look forward to sharing this one in my March makes but I'm very excited to share the pattern and the fabric with you today. I'm going to be working with this delicious Atelier Brunette double gauze. I have wanted to sew with a fabric like this for a very long time. I'm not a huge fan of normal double gauze, I just find it so shifty and a bit tricky to work with if I'm honest, but this Atelier Brunette double gauze is quite a lot thinner and finer in terms of the feel and I just love these gold dots. And I love this burgundy colour, I think it looks really nice on me and I'm looking forward to making up the Pauline Alice Luria dress. Now this is a really interesting pattern, I wanted to try and sew a vintage pattern this year and this isn't a vintage pattern itself but it does have that vintage style that I really like. I guess it's kind of a 1940s style, but it does look contemporary enough that I think it will fit really beautifully into my handmade wardrobe. So it's a wrap style dress and it has buttons down the front and it has gorgeous gathers just over the bust and then on the back yoke. I absolutely love the style lines of this pattern and I think it's going to look really beautiful in this double gauze. It will have that float, but it will hold the structure of those beautiful sleeves. I just love that curved hemband at the bottom of those sleeves. I just think there are a lot of gorgeous details in this pattern that I'm very much looking forward to sewing up. So that one's going to be on my cutting table very, very soon. Now in terms of sizing, this pattern comes in sizes 34 to 48 European sizes. So again, not a hugely inclusive pattern, but I am looking forward to giving it a try. I fall between sizes 8 and 10 and 12 as I often do. I'm not too worried about my hip measurements because it is a gathered skirt, but I am going to have to do some grading on those top bodice pieces so that I can grade from an 8 across my chest and my bust through to a 10 at the waist. I might end up doing a bit of a 12 for that one because I want to make sure I get the fit of the sleeves right. Because I do sometimes find if I grade down for my chest and my bust that the sleeves are a little bit too tight. So I am going to have to do some careful thinking and some grading of those pattern pieces. So thank you Backstitch Shop for sending me the fabric and the pattern and I'm very much looking forward to getting that sewn up and written up very very soon. So my next pattern is actually something I want to get sewn up in March. Now I'm sure a lot of you will know of the Sew Yellow for Endo challenge that is run by Jess who is So What If I Sew here on YouTube and over on Instagram. Now every March she does an amazing job of raising awareness for endometriosis and talking about women's health and I love the work that Jess is doing for endometriosis support and research. 
So do get involved with this challenge if you can. The idea is to sew up something yellow or something with yellow in it and then donate some money to support endometriosis or just talk about it on your Instagram to raise awareness in the sewing community about this condition. So I am going to jump on board with this. I am planning to sew up something yellow. You'll know that recently I made a beautiful bird skirt in some Liberty fabric and it has lovely hints of yellow in the pattern and I really would love to make a yellow top to go with that skirt for the summer. So I have ordered about a meter of some jersey fabric from Minerva and I'm planning to make the LB Textiles Wayland tank from that fabric and I'll hopefully have that made up in time to enter the Sew Yellow for Endo challenge. Now this top comes with a scoop neck or a v-neck and it is quite a cropped top. What I love about this is that there is a lot of support on the LB Textiles blog in terms of putting in elastic so that the v-neck really keeps its shape and also putting elastic into the armholes as well to help those to keep their shape, which I really like. You'll know if you've followed me for a while, I love finishing garments as well as I can. So I'm really looking forward to trying this pattern and to putting in the elastic and hopefully that will really help this pattern to keep its shape. What I will end up doing, I think though, is lengthening this top by a good couple of inches. I prefer my tops to sit probably at my hip length so that I can wear them under my high-waisted skirt and jeans. And whilst I love the shape of the armhole and the neck, I think it would be too cropped for me personally to wear comfortably. So I will be lengthening this top, but I do love the shape of it. It also has a built-in shelf bra, which I think will be fantastic for the summer in terms of wearing it comfortably and staying cool in the hot summer weather that we're hopefully going to have. Now, Albi Textiles patterns are fantastic in terms of their inclusivity. This one comes in sizes A to N, so that's a 31 inch bust right up to a 57 inch bust. So I'm looking forward to that fabric arriving soon, and then I can start working on my Wayland tank. So I have two more patterns to share with you today and two more pieces of fabric. So you'll know again if you've watched some of my videos before that I worked on a bomber jacket with Amelia Allen Sews who is also here on YouTube and over on Instagram and I'll link her channel below. Together we made a bomber jacket from an amazing tulle and sand washed viscose from Lamazi Fabrics and it was just so much fun working with her on that project. Now we've decided we would like to do another project together and another Amelia project actually. So we are going to sew the Amelia dress by OJ Room Patterns. Now this is such a lovely floaty spring dress and I'm so excited to sew this one. It comes in sizes 6 to 20 but if you look at the pattern there are about 28 different options or ways that you can sew this and get different garments. So you can make it as a shirt or a blouse and you can make it as a dress, you can make it with no sleeves, short sleeves, long sleeves, you can make it with a simple cuff or an elastic cuff or a cuff with ties, you can make it with a simple v-neck or there is a little collar or there's a collar with a ruffle. There's just so many different options, there are different lengths of skirt, different kinds of tiers that you can add. So I'm still tossing up which version I would like to make. I think I want to make the long sleeved version of this dress because I think that would be quite useful to have in the spring. But I may yet go for the short sleeved version. You know that I love a short sleeved dress and then layering that for the winter. <laughs> but I do love the long sleeves on this dress so they might win me over in the end. We'll just have to see. There's some thinking to be done before I cut into those pattern pieces. So the other lovely thing about this dress is that there are no fastenings. I love a dress with no fastenings. It's so easy to just put on and wear. There is a waist channel with ties made from the same fabric. So you can draw it in at the waist, which I love, but it looks like it will be quite a lovely straightforward make and certainly one that will be beautiful to wear in the spring. Now the fabric I've chosen for this one is this blue sand washed viscose from Lamazi Fabrics. I so enjoyed sewing up their sand washed viscose when we made the bomber jackets. It was such a lovely fabric to sew with and it's so soft but it does have a lovely sort of hold to it. It's a drapey fabric but there's just enough that I think it will hold the sleeves and the ruffle collar if I make that really beautifully and this color I mean I just couldn't pass that up. I love this colour. I think v-necks look really lovely on me in terms of the neck shape but I may well add that ruffle at the collar because I do love a ruffle. But like I said I'm still deciding on what sleeve length but it'll definitely be made in this beautiful sand washed viscose and Amelia is also making one in a different colour but also in this sand washed viscose so do stay tuned as we'll try and share those together when we've finished making them. 
Now my last plan is one that I would like to get sewn up in February. Currently over on Minerva they are running a Butterick challenge and that is to sew with one of the Butterick patterns and share it on the Minerva website. Now I am a Minerva brand ambassador so this pattern and fabric were sent to me in return for a blog. I will link my profile on Minerva below in the description box so do head over there and have a look at the things that I have already made for Minerva if you fancy it. And this make will hopefully go up before the end of February and then I can share it in my February makes video. But it is the Butterick 6661 that I would like to sew. It's not particularly seasonally appropriate but I just loved the style lines of this one again. In the line drawings you can see there's a beautiful crisscross back which I just think is stunning and I do love the princess seams across the front and then there's just a very simple gathered skirt. So I think it could look really, really stunning in a beautiful fabric for the spring and the summer. So the fabric that I've chosen to sew it with is a Minerva exclusive fabric. Now I've not tried one of their Minerva exclusive viscoses before. I have sewn up their jerseys and I've been so impressed with the quality of those jerseys. They were beautiful to sew with and they've been fabulous to wear. So I thought it would be really nice to try the viscose Shelley. I'll turn it up the right way. This is called Countryside Cluster and I just think it's so lovely. I love those bright colours, especially for the spring. And I think that will look really nice as sort of a fitted dress with those straps across the back and, and the softness of this viscose shelly will look beautiful with that gathered skirt. Now I do believe this pattern has a built-in shelf bra and obviously I'll interface those straps so that it gives it a wee bit of structure across my back. But I do think that will make a beautiful summer sundress. So I'm really looking forward to sewing that up as well. So thank you Minerva for sending this fabric out for me to work with this month. Right, well that's quite enough from me. I think I'm going to be very, very busy in February and March. I have another couple of patterns that are sitting on my cutting table that I'm desperate to sew up as well, but I think they might have to wait until the weather warms up a little more. Thank you so much for watching today. Do comment below with what you're working on this month. It's always lovely to hear about new patterns and hear what you're working on in your sewing room. I have a slightly different video that's coming out next week, not one I've made before, so do come back and see what it is that I get up to next week with my handmade wardrobe. Until then, I hope you have a very happy week ahead filled with lots of lovely sewing and I'll see you soon. Goodbye!